Today's video, gents, is all about the Dirty Dozen. And no, I'm not talking about that crack commando unit sent in before D-Day to kill Nazis. Buongiorno. No, what I'm talking about are the difficult to pronounce toxic ingredients in most men's grooming products. Seriously, have you ever tried to read these ingredient lists? They're overwhelming and it seems like they're written in another language. I'm going to make it easy for you. I'm going to lay out all the toxic ingredients, the various names they go by, and the products they're most likely found in. Down in the description of today's video, I'm going to link over to an article that goes into a lot more detail. In addition, you can grab a free PDF, which will have all this stuff listed out for you. First up on the list, formaldehyde. Yes, the stuff used to preserve dead bodies, dead animals. Guess what? They use it in certain grooming products. They call it a different name. They're a little bit sneaky, but they do this to preserve the products. That way it can sit on the shelf for years. Now, the aliases this will go by are methanediol and formic aldehyde. And by the way, I know I'm going to mispronounce a few of these. I just don't speak toxic ingredient. Now, formaldehyde is a known carcinogen, meaning basically that it causes and has been shown to be linked to cancer. But in addition, if you don't get cancer, you also stand the chance of getting asthma and basically neurotoxicity. Now, where to watch out for this? Lotions, deodorants, soaps, and shampoos. Next up on the toxic ingredient list, mineral oil. Now, mineral oil, I think is going to surprise a lot of people because you've seen it out there for decades and it's used in tons of products because it's incredibly inexpensive. It actually has no odor to it. And this is just something that stays stable on the shelf. In the last 10 years, we've seen numerous studies come up that have shown that mineral oil can be linked to certain types of skin cancer. And apparently for us guys, it's really bad because it increases the chance of scrotum cancer. Yes, that is a real thing and you want to be careful of it. Now, some of the aliases that mineral oil goes by are paraffininum liquidum, petrolatum, sera microcrystallina, microcrystalline wax, ozocorite, serocene isoparaf, and synthetic wax. Products where you want to watch out for this are going to be moisturizers and hair conditioners. So let's address the elephant in the room. Why isn't the FDA banning all of these ingredients? Well, the good news is that they did ban 11 ingredients. The bad news is that they haven't updated that law since 1938. Now on the flip side, you've got the EU. They've banned over 1400 ingredients, which you could say they've, yeah, maybe gone a little bit overboard on this. My thoughts on this, buy products from a company you can trust. Gents, if you're looking for a grooming company that uses all natural and organic ingredients, you want to check out Vitaman. Now, you probably know that I'm one of the owners of Vitaman. I stand behind every product we sell. But what you may not know is that everything is made in Australia. Why does that matter? Well, my partner, Claire, who founded the company over 20 years ago, she has always followed EU regulations. Everything I'm talking about in today's video, we follow and you will not find any of those ingredients in our products. Example, let's talk about microbeads. You're not going to find any plastic microbeads in our exfoliators, our face scrubs. Problem with those microbeads is that it can get under the eyes and that can cause infection and lead to issues with the eyes. In addition, they can even go into the skin. But the worst part is for the environment because those microbeads do not dissolve. Our face scrub uses finely crushed walnut shells along with bamboo powder and that right there exfoliates the skin without the use of microbeads. And mineral oil, remember I talked about that? We don't use any in any of our moisturizers, any of our products, whether it's our body moisturizer, our face moisturizer, you can bet that we're using ingredients that are safe. And let's talk about antiperspirants. Do you know why antiperspirants work? They use aluminum. Literally, aluminum is getting shoved into your pores and it's stopping you from sweating. Now, does that sound healthy? And they've even shown that exposure to aluminum over a long time can possibly lead to Alzheimer's disease. So how about instead of blocking those pores for 72 hours and using unnatural, nasty, toxic ingredients on your armpits, you actually use natural ingredients, which are going to inhibit the growth of bacteria and are going to keep you smelling fresh all day long. Now, gents, Vitaman is my company and I stand behind every product we sell. We've got a 100% money back guarantee, but more importantly, we're transparent. Go to our website, look at our ingredient deck. We put this information out there because we want you to be able to make an informed decision. And I think you're going to find whether or not you need shaving products, whether or not you need hair products, shampoo products, you will find we've got it all when it comes to grooming. So go check out Vitaman guys. And don't forget that link down in the description is going to give you the best deal on the web. So use it or lose it. Next up, we've got the infamous parabens. Most of us have heard of this. A lot of companies say they're paraben free and that's good because this has been around since the 1950s and they were put out there because they pretty much eliminated mold. They allowed a product to sit on that shelf for months, if not years and still be usable. Now, why should they be avoided? Well, over the last 30 years, there's been a lot of studies 
studies that have shown, yeah, this is not good for the human body. Some studies showing that they could be linked to cancer. Other ones showing that they, yeah, cause our hormones to go up and down and really just not a good thing. Other times they show that they can make the skin more sensitive to actually different types of UV rays that can cause cancer. And other studies have shown that they just simply irritate the skin. They can cause allergic reactions. They're just not good for the human body. And where do you find parabens? Shampoos, conditioners, body washes, and moisturizers. Now, you're going to see them go by a lot of aliases, but for the most part, we're going to have parabens at the end of the word. Methylparabens, propylparabens, butylparabens, and how could anyone forget ethylparabens? And in case you're a DC fan, there is no apparent link between parabens and parademons. All hail dark side. Now, what about phthalates? This is one not many people hear about, and initially it was used simply to make plastic so it wouldn't be brittle. Now, it was later used to actually get things to mix, which don't normally mix. So, that was the use of phthalates, but you should avoid them. Why? Because they have been shown to cause birth defects. Seriously, they've been shown to cause all types of hormone disruption and they are so bad that the FDA is actually monitoring them. Now, you'll sometimes see this labeled as diethyl thylate. You'll also see monoethyl thylate, uh, but anytime you see thylate, you want to avoid it. Watch out because you can still see it out there in some shampoos, conditioners, lotions, deodorants, and moisturizers. Next up, we've got butylated hydroxytroline. We'll just call that one BHT for short. Now, BHT is a synthetic ingredient created in a lab to preserve products. Now, whoever came up with BHT apparently didn't do enough testing because this has been shown to disrupt your hormones and can cause issues with the liver, with the kidney, and the thyroid. Watch out for it in moisturizers, antiperspirants, and exfoliators. Next up, we got polyethylene glycol compounds. Now, PEGs, as they're commonly called, are petroleum products, and these are used oftentimes to thicken a formula. On a side note, they've also been used as laxatives. Now, when it comes to this list, PEGs is probably one of the least bad things on it, but there are issues with PEGs, especially if they get under the skin. They can really cause a lot of issues, a lot of irritation, even a little bit of toxicity. Uh, another thing you have to worry about PEGs is that they could actually age the skin prematurely. Now, they go by a few aliases, polyethylene oxide, also polyoxyethylene. And strange enough, a product that's been shown to cause premature aging of the skin will be found in some moisturizers. Next up, we've got coal tar dye. Now, coal tar is a mixture of many petroleum chemicals and it's used to normally treat psoriasis and dandruff. The problem with coal tar dyes is they've shown to contain heavy metals. These heavy metals are linked to brain toxins and carcinogens. Now, unfortunately, coal tar dye is a bit hard to identify. On the back of the ingredients, look for color names that start with F, D, and C or D and C, and then you want to look for the color name and it's going to have some numbers next to it. That is a warning sign. Where do you have to worry about this? Mostly in hair dye products and some hair products, so watch for it. Next up, we've got siloxanes. These are used because they make hair products dry a bit quicker. In addition, they're used in creams because they just make it easier to apply to the skin and to the hair. Now, the issue with siloxanes is they've shown to interfere with human hormone function. So, if you don't want your hormones going all over the place, you want to avoid them. Aliases, watch out for cyclotetrasiloxane, also cyclopentasiloxane. And for the most part, you're going to see these in moisturizers, moisturizers for the skin, moisturizers for the hair. So, what video to watch next? How about how I stopped wearing deodorant for a year and this happened? Seriously, guys, had a lot of fun with this video and guess what? I don't stink and I explain why in this video.